Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a rundown of some of the new releases in the perfume world. Very exciting, they're coming up to Christmas, lots of brands releasing new perfumes. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. It's all about perfumes. Do subscribe if you're not already. I, every week I'm putting up new perfume videos, so I'd love to have you here and get involved in the comments down below. And as always, I will link down below where you can get these perfumes as well, both in America and the UK. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. So first up, we have a new edition from Chloe from the classic Chloe Eau de Parfum range called Chloe Low. This is a much lighter version of the original. When I first sprayed it, I got a lot of the grapefruit that was in there. Um, I have it on a card and I sprayed it earlier on my um, wrist to make see how it lasted. I have to say it hasn't lasted that much. I think Lowe's perfumes are usually really quite light and this is no exception. So you get a ton of the grapefruit at first. It was almost a bit like very zesty. There's also quite a lot of lychee in here so that again a zesty fruity lightness but then as it softened down it began to remind me more of the other Chloe's with the rose and the muskiness coming through. There's also a little bit of pretty magnolia in here as well so it's a very light pretty perfume. It is an eau de toilette, so this is not a good laster. I have to say, it's been a few hours and it's pretty much gone from my skin. So if you're looking for something very light and fresh and pretty and easygoing, then this is a good option. Or perhaps something to layer with original Chloe. Um, but if you're looking for something that's going to last quite a long time, then you're better off sticking to the Chloe Eau de Parfum original or one of the stronger flankers. Next we have Lady Million Empire, um, a sort of purple version from the Lady Million range. This, like all the other Lady Millions, is really quite sweet and I would say quite a young smell. I wouldn't describe the either the bottled packaging, the branding or the fragrance to be particularly um, classy fragrances. I'd say these are pretty everyday type smells. But this one really is sweet. It has like a cognac fragrance note in it. This is like smelling a cocktail, like a sweet fruity cocktail. It really was quite a powerful sweetness, even more so than I expected from Lady Million. It has patchouli and a musk and some white florals, which come through in time and help it last a bit. This, you know, this has lasted on me better than the Chloe Low did, um, but it's still not huge, amazing for the lasting one. I'd say maybe three or four hours. Um, but like all the Lady Million range, they do have quite good projection you can smell them on people but this is definitely like one of the sweetest in the range definitely one for people that like sweet in your face type perfumes it reminded me a bit of like a sweet Paco Rabanne Olympia type fragrance note if that makes sense Next, of course, we have the new one from Dior Joy, Dior Joy Intense. And I have done a detailed review on this, which I'll leave a link below. But basically, when Original Joy came out, it was quite a fresh, simple perfume. But the Intense version is really very different. It's a warm, vanilla, winter version of Joy, I guess. It lasted on me much longer than original one did. It, I'd say five hours, I could still smell it on me. It stayed on clothes, so much better um, projection and strength than original Joy. It has a pretty musky rose in it. It's much more grown up than the original. And this is gonna be, I think, much more successful for them than original Joy was. It's just got more about it. It's got more personality, but it really is quite vanilla-y. So um, if you like your roses and your vanillas, then go check this out because it is that, that warm vanilla hug that you would expect, I guess, from a, an autumn fragrance launch. Next, we have a new one from Oscar de la Renta called Bella Rosa. Now, this isn't available in every shop um, as commonly as other fragrances are. I think Oscar de la Renta are a bit more exclusive in their distribution. Um, but basically, this comes in a pr very pretty um, blush pink type bottle. And the fragrance is very much like that. It's very much a pretty rose. 
freesia and jasmine mixed with the rose almost like an english country garden very very floral there's a hint of mandarin orange especially in the first sort of minute and then there's patchouli here as well which help it last and some woody ambery notes which again help it last and create that sort of warmth that we would expect from a autumn winter fragrance so this is a nice way to get a pretty feminine rose but still have patchouli and woody notes so it still has a bit of complexity I'd say that you can't really distinguish one particular note from another except perhaps the rose. It blends quite nicely together to create just a pretty feminine floral fragrance. Next we have a new one from Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb which is Flower Bomb Bombalicious. Now this does have patchouli in like the other flower bombs do but it's not really like a lot of the others. It really isn't that sweet. It has a cashmere and a muskiness to it. And there's also orange and grapefruit, but the, the warmth, musky, cashmeriness really dominates. And then the sweetness comes through with some black currants, which um, is lovely for this time of year. But it's not the intensity that we know from the other um, flower bomb range. This is basically like should have been called citrus flower balm or something um sort of citrusy warmy cashmere so there's not really many others like this from victor and rolf so quite different usually a lot of their perfumes are sweet and intense patchouli um so this is the departure for them and i guess that lightness is represented in the lighter colored packaging it's a bit pinkier whereas normally flower bombs like a dark purpley type color um so this would probably be good for someone who wants something fresher simpler than flower bomb because original flower bomb can be really quite intense and um, but check it out and you can add this to your collection if you're one of the people that collects all the different flower bomb perfumes because the bottle is beautiful the packaging's pretty um, and I'd say this is a relatively safe gift it's a well-known brand people will know it but it's not as um, sort of division dividing as the original flower bomb which is sort of a love-hate type fragrance the 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 cashmere and the citrus are both quite neutral like difficult to dislike this fragrance we also have a new one in the Signorita range from Salvatore Figaramo. Um, just after I did a review of all the, in the Signoritas in the range, they then release a new one, how annoying. Um, but I'll leave that link below anyway. This is basically like having a perfume of vanilla and coconut ice creams. So, you know, you go to the ice cream shop, you say, I have one vanilla, one coconut, and then you turn that into a perfume. That's what this is like. There's also some frangipan and some mandarin orange that comes through at first, but predominantly it is a sweet, sweet vanilla and coconut. And vanilla and coconut both really good for lasting, so you do get some good lasting power out of this compared to some of the others in the range which are a bit more lighter and floral or zestier. Um, but it's definitely a deeper version. Coconut as well works well with it being an autumn release. The packaging is darker and deeper than most of the others and that represents the, the coconut but it is still sweet and girly. It's still not taking itself seriously um, compared to some of the others in the range and perhaps a bit more simple and not as complex as the original. Next we have the new one from Hermes, Twilly de Hermes Eau Pouvre. Now this is a sort of flanker from the original Twilly de Hermes but it's completely different. Um, the packaging and everything is really cute. I have the little card here and it has a, a little sort of pretend Hermes scarf around the edge, um, sort of tied around the perfume which I think is super cute but totally not what I was expecting. I thought it would be like the original but a bit different completely different, not even this, any of the same fragrance notes. The original was like a gingery, unusual, um, classic fragrance. This is like a warm, spicy fragrance, so definitely good for autumn, winter. It basically just has three notes in it, patchouli, rose, and pink pepper. And pink pepper is usually used in fragrances like a little bit, but here it, it dominates. It's like the star of the show. It really is that peppery, um, almost spiciness, almost aromatic-y woodiness. Um, and then the patchouli and the rose are quite strong. And um, this had lasted on me really well, probably 
most out of all the ones I've tried in this in this perfume video and I think this is going to do quite well if you like those soft um, those soft spicy notes because it really does last. And then finally we have a brand new perfume from Ariana Grande called Thank You Next I guess after her song Thank You Next. This is a very young sweet innocent perfume. It is like a coconut macaroon like going into a macaroon shop super sweet. There's then raspberry a bit of pear and a little bit of rose and musk but basically it's super sweet macaroon and coconut. Coconut means it's quite good for autumn it's not quite as um fresh as some of her other ones but it's a very simple um and low price fragrance like as a lot of celebrity perfumes are you know you guys know the drill so that's it let me know if you've tried any of these or what you think of them in the comments down below and let me know if there's any other things you would like me to review but that's it guys so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you again soon bye